Hi everyone on Facebook Live. We're here at City Gate tonight. Um, and I have a couple announcements before we um, introduce the speaker. Um, first of all, I wanted to announce again that Main Point Ministries has decided um, to sponsor a lunch at City Gate the first Saturday of most months. So we'll be looking for volunteers to help serve the lunches and also volunteers to help provide the food. So if you have any questions about that, um, for people who are here, there's sign-up sheets back on the table in the back. Um, and if you're on Facebook Live, you can message Floyd or I or um, put your questions in the comments tonight. And then we'll get one of us will get back to you on that. Um, so our first lunch we're sponsoring is January 6th, which is in two weeks. Um, we still need some individual um, bags of chips and bananas. So if you're able to donate any of those, please reach out to one of us and um, we'll get you signed up for that. Um, also, since time has been flying by, it seems, um, the Main Point Anniversary Celebration uh, will be um, Saturday, March 2nd, and we'll have more information um, coming up as uh, we get closer. But you might want to mark your calendar for March 2nd. Uh, it'll be in the evening, um, but I'll have to get a time um, to announce that later. So those are the announcements at this point. So I'm going to call up our speaker, Christina Miller, and she's going to share with us tonight what God has put on her heart to share. So I'll just say a prayer for yeah. you, and then we can get started. Okay. Okay. You know what? I'm going to get on this side of you because I'm actually going to go to the back this week. Um, <coughs> so, anyway, well, thanks, Christina, for being here. Yeah, I appreciate you. you. Well, Father God, thank you for Christina and her desire to um, love people well and, uh, and love you well, too. Um, we thank you for her willingness to come and speak tonight. Uh, we thank you for the message that you've given her. And I just pray that you'll remove any nervousness. Um, and that you will speak through her mm -hmm. um, what you want us to hear tonight. So um, just thank you for her, and we'll give you the glory for mm -hmm. um, everything that's happening in and through her. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I just have to pray again. <laughs> 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 God, I thank you for each person that you brought out tonight. Lord, I thank you for the people online who are listening. God, I thank you that you love your people. Lord, I just ask that. Uh, I just thank you that you are going to speak to each person who came out tonight, God, and who's listening. God, I thank you that you are going to speak your words into their ear about what they need to hear, God, because you love your people. I thank you, God, for your love, and I just ask uh, that we would encounter your love tonight um, together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I love him. That was so great what you shared, and, and it like gave a good base. So I might reference it for some of it at some of my time. That's how God works. You know? Amen. He does. So um, I want to start off with something that the Lord gave me uh, maybe two years ago after we did a youth retreat, and it was I was praying. Um, it was actually before I shared my testimony too about what God did throughout that weekend of the youth retreat, and I just saw a picture of people up on a stage, they were youth, but each person had a different color shirt on, and they were each singing like their own song, and that's how, like, the revelation of it was, like, each of us has a different color that God has made us to be, nobody has our same color, and, and so often we, like, compare our colors, or we, um, uh, of how we are, we compare ourselves who other people, God has made other people to be, and then that pre uh, prevents us from being who God has called us to be. Mm -hmm. And so you honor God like nobody else can honor. Like you individually honor God in a way that nobody else can honor him because he made us fearfully and wonderfully made, and nobody is like us in the world. And, and we love God like nobody else can love him and, and touch a piece of his heart that nobody else can touch. 
And, and the enemy tries to steal that from us by, by saying, like, you should be taller, you should be shorter, you should be skinnier, you should be bigger, you should be um, do this job instead of this job, you should be louder, you should be quieter. But that is not who God has called us to be, and he falls in love with us uh, just the way we are. So um, I just want to tell you guys that today. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and it'll come back around. But today, I'm going to tell my story about how I grew in love with Jesus. Mm-hmm. So I knew Jesus um, since I was very little, because I grew up, my family's knew the Lord, I grew up in church. And um, I remember sitting in Sunday school, in preschool, and there was this big mural on the wall of, of these different animals. It was a jungle. And I was sitting beside this jungle wall, and I was just thinking, like, I know, I know that God is real, and I know that I have a hole in my heart, a hole in my heart, and I know that 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 reward system, wherever Kim put it, (laughs) 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 yeah, I know that that cannot be satisfied by the love of people. Like, I I don't know, my four-year-old self just knew that, and I knew that the hole in my heart could not be satisfied by um, achievements or like, I, I felt like I could do anything. I don't know why. When I was four years old, I felt like I could be the Superman. Probably because my parents were really encouraging to me. But I knew, like, even if I became a famous soccer player because I love soccer, I, that would not satisfy my, my whole one. I knew that God was real. And so um, I was sitting at the kitchen table, my four or five-year-old self, and I told my parents, I said, I want to invite Jesus to my heart. And they were like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was like, but I don't want to do it right now. The evening sounds better. So. They were like, okay, well, we want to do it with you. And I said, okay. So I finished eating, and I went away, and I was like, oh, I can't wait. And so I ran into the living room and stuck my head in the couch. And I asked, Jesus, would you come into my heart? I need you. Would you forgive me of my sins? I need you. Come into my heart. And I just knew, like, at that moment that he was in my heart. And that we were together now. Mm-hmm. And so that's where it began. So that hole in my heart was filled with Jesus now. And as I grew, um, I was not perfect at four years old when I asked the Lord in my heart. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it has been a journey. And the journey was uh, working out my salvation. And so growing up in a Christian home and church, I knew what the right thing was to do. I knew, like, the right answers. I knew what the Bible said. I was very blessed, thank God, with to know the truth from little on up. But God's work in my heart came through obedience, because I had to get what I knew in my head down to my heart. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, okay, Philippians 2.12 says, So then, beloved, just as you have always obeyed, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling, both to will and work for his great pleasure. So that verse talks about working out your salvation. Um, not that we're saved by works, but we get what's from our head into our heart by obeying like what the Holy Spirit is prompting. So, um, in elementary school, I'm going to go from little on up. In elementary school, um, I have to back up one more time. When I asked the Lord in my heart at the time of my salvation, the Holy Spirit was asking me, am I enough to fill the hole in your heart? Do you believe that I'm enough to fill the hole in your heart? And that's when I said, yes, I believe that you are the only thing. And so when I was in elementary school, um, I that's when I was learning to hear God's voice um, more. And the way that I learned to hear God's voice, part of it was when I would be in school and I would be with my friends and they would be talking bad about somebody and, and I was like, boy, I have something good to say. And then the Holy Spirit would be like, nope, don't say that, like, warning, like, that feeling that you get, and because it was gossip. And so sometimes I would say it anyway, because that reward system is I chose, like, flesh, I chose, okay, I need their attention, and I need their friendship in order to be satisfied. And when that would happen, and I would choose the wrong thing, I would feel ashamed. And I, I would look away from it, and this bad thing that I did, and I, I would think that God kind of ignored it too, and if I just looked over here, like, it would be okay, and I just, like, didn't think about it. But then that feeling of sh- shame grew, 
and I couldn't like look at God. Like I felt far because I felt like, okay, I'm bad. I have this here, and and like I feel like I did something bad. And so, and then finally, I would say, I'm sorry, God, I did this bad thing, and I would feel close to Him again. Um, so that was mm, feeling shame, and um, so. I will get back to that throughout my story later on. Um, but in elementary school, and then I would learn when I would when I would stop at that point and say, no, uh, I'm, I'm going to be quiet. I'm not going to say that really interesting thing that I had to say about my friend. I'm not going to say that Holy Spirit, I'll obey you. And then I, sometimes I would see later on why. Like maybe, they, like maybe I would have a teaching that night at youth group, and they would talk about the bad things about gossiping. But as you obey, you start to see like fruit from your obedience, and you're like, oh, this is the right way. And that's like the reward system that Kim was saying. It's like you get your brain gets trained, and then, oh yeah, trust God, like it does good things. <laughs> right. So in elementary school, um, I was new in first grade, and a lot of my friends knew each other because they had been to kindergarten. But I didn't know anybody. And I ate my peanut butter. I didn't know how things worked. So for snack time, I ate my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And my friend was like, why are you eating your sandwich for snacks? And I was like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> and so I kind of became afraid of what I didn't know. And God, during that time, was asking me, am I enough when you're afraid? Like, as your little six years old self, am, do you trust me that I'm enough when you're afraid? And so... Uh, I grew in that knowledge that I could trust God even when I didn't know or the expectation was or I was afraid. So in middle school, um, something that I worked through was the fear of man. I wanted to, like, comparison was a big thing. And I wanted to be like everybody else. Everybody else had Nike shoes on. And these aren't Nike shoes, but you can they are. And I wanted, like, nice Nike shoes like everyone else. Um, and I, like, judged people for sounds terrible, but like, you didn't look put together, I felt like, you know, like, this is what I knew the enemy was saying, and I know a lot of times it wasn't true, but sometimes I would allow myself to believe it, like, they aren't put together, like, I would rather talk to this person, um, but God grew me a lot of it, out of it, and I, the more I chose him, he showed me his eyes, and so, um, God was asking me, am I enough, even if you are going to stick out? So that is a question that the Lord answered in my middle school times as I chose him. And I, I chose to be different than my friends, my Christian friends even, because God is each calling us to a higher standard wherever we are because we carry strength inside of us that other people don't. As the body of Christ, we each have a strength. And so we're each going to stick out a little bit in our own way because God calls us to lead as the body of Christ in your own way, like your own strength that God calls you to to go after, if that, like, because we strengthen each other, if that makes sense. So, uh, yeah. And I felt different because my family, and, and this is another truth that I realized, is that we each come from different families. And nope, and when you're in school, you feel like everyone's life is, should look the same, but that's so not true. Like, God, like, we each have a unique culture inside our family, and it's a gift to us. And the enemy tried to steal that gift from me by comparison. Um, but, yeah. So I'm thankful that he, God gave me his view. So in high school, um, God uh, had already established the, um, in me that uh, he was enough, even if I stuck out. So I didn't really like sticking out um, but and doing things differently and having a higher standard for myself. But... Um, I knew that it was God's best. So uh, I would go to soccer practice. I loved playing soccer. And I didn't really have a friend group in high school that I really connected with in school. Um, my math class, I, like people wouldn't invite me to sit with them. It was like complete because I switched to public school. And so um, I had to find new friends, but I never really felt like I fit in. And so in high school, um, I had played on a soccer team. and. I wasn't afraid to wear my Waldo socks. I had black and pink <laughs> striped socks, and I wasn't afraid to wear them because I loved them. I was like, you know what? I'm embracing, embracing who God made me to be. <laughs> so, um, 
so I wore my Waldos, Waldo socks. And he also called me to start a Bible study, which I um, was so afraid. <laughs> I announced to everyone, I was like, everyone, we're going to have a Bible. And I'm like, my voice is quivering. And uh, we were going to have a Bible study. And I said, if you want to come, I'm going to bring chocolate milk. Because everyone likes chocolate milk. <laughs> 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 and so God was asking me, am I enough? Do you believe that I'm enough? Like reality, in reality, am I your reward enough that if you obey me, that's a better reward than if you didn't obey me and fit in and everyone liked you? Like what reward are you going to choose? And, and I, by the grace of God, I chose him because he had been teaching me about this. Um, so I graduated high school, and um, I went to a, a place called Rodale Institute, and it's a farmer's training program because I was interested in farming organically, and I love being outside. And um, it was with people, the group that I was in, they were... Um, veterans, some veterans, and they were older. Some of them were pretty rough around the edges, and then some of them were more like hippie people, and none of them knew God. And I felt like God had put it on my heart to start um, a Bible study video series by Nicky Gumbel. I don't know if anybody has heard of them, yeah. but he goes through like basics of the Bible. And I was like, dude, I'm... Alpha I'm Course. Yes, I'm Alpha course. course. You got it. <laughs> I was 19 years old, and all these people were like, 24, 25, 30, 40, 50. <laughs> like, I'm not even lying. Some of them were black from the city. Some of them were from uh, different countries. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and, and through that, like in the midst of starting it, God was asking me, am I enough for you even if this fails? Even if nobody shows up, am I enough for you? Um, and I was like, okay, yes, you are. <laughs> but I went for it, and people showed up every week. Sometimes seven people showed up. Sometimes 20 people showed up. And, like, even after we did that course, um, and they were li- willing to, like, sit and discuss with each other. And I was blown away by how God worked through me, wow. who didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> it, it was really amazing. Um, and then after I finished that, it was nine months away from home, I went to work at um, Good Sam, which I did with there too. <laughs> and I worked the night shift. And um, during those times, I so this is funny, but when I was little, I had a dream that I, I was like, it would be kind of cool to be a nun, because <laughs> because they get to spend like their whole day with Jesus, yeah. all of them, and they don't have any distraction. <laughs> And um, so I was like, well, this is my time to be with Jesus with no distractions. And it really limited my time with friends because I would sleep during the day and be awake at night. Um, And this was like two years ago. So um, I got to spend a lot of time with the Lord, but it also was like I didn't get a lot of friend time. But it was a special season in my life that was um, set apart. And God was asking me during that time, Oh, I have to back up. I didn't sleep very good (laughs) because I was trying to sleep during the day. Sometimes I would get three hours, sometimes I would get four hours, and this was like day after day. And I felt like the walking dead sometimes if you guys ever have felt that feeling. And God was asking me through that is, am I enough for you even if you don't feel good? Even if you feel like I've abandoned you or like I should be giving you more strength, even if you feel terrible. Um, am I enough for you? And um, that was the question that he was answering. That, and he did answer me. Like, I would be able to spend more time in prayer than I ever have before. And um, God met me. He would give me words for people that I was like, wow. I would tell people that, and they were like, how did you know that? <laughs> like, this one girl came in the middle of the night, and I forget what I said to her, but she was so blessed by what I had to say was like something really random like do you have um did you and your sister like paint the color pink or something and she's like yeah how did you know and she like opened up and I was able to share the love of God with her and and God met me in the word as I read like he filled my heart up with his love um so he answered the question that he is enough even if I don't feel good 
Um, and then after I finished that, that was a couple months over the winter, I started working at the Potter's House of Ruth. And God provided that opportunity for me on my last day of my um, night shift job. Um, I went to visit my friend Gabby, who's Julie's daughter. Shout, shout out to Julie and Gabby. <laughs> and Julie was living at the Potter's House of Ruth, and she's like, so, we need some help. <laughs> Do you know anyone who would like to help us? And I was like, yeah, I'm interested. And so God like opened that door, because he's so faithful. When we are obedient, he's so faithful. Um, and during my time at the Potter's House of Ruth, it was a big learning curve for me. I didn't know much about people c coming out of addiction. I didn't know much about like mental health. And um, God really taught me a lot through it. But there's a lot of times I didn't understand. I knew God's heart for people, but I didn't understand really what was going on or how I could help or fix. And so that time, it was, and I didn't really know what God was doing in me. Um, at the time either. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and so God, through that time, God is asking me, am I enough for you even if you don't understand what's going on? And so as, as seasons change, he starts to show you more about what he's doing in the moment. And so he is answering that question for me about what he's doing. But I don't think we ever get the whole picture until we get to heaven either. But cool to see what he's doing. So that's my life story <laughs> in a nutshell. And I just want to tell you, like, through every season, the Holy Spirit was there. Like, he was there talking to me. He is the living God. And I think, like, um, there's, in my time of, like, m m my upgrowth, I felt like God was far sometimes, and that he was just, like, an idea. He was an idea that was true, but and he's the truth, and I knew that. But sometimes I missed like the revelation that he was really there with me, that he was really there in every circumstance that I was in. Um, and I think that as the body of Christ, God's, God wants to meet us in a tangible way more than we ever have experienced before because he's the living God. And he, his first desire is relationship with us. Mm -hmm. Above, like, head knowledge of what we think to know, what we know about is true in the Bible, he wants to meet us in our hearts. He wants both. And um, so that is a big thing that has he has been speaking throughout my life. Um, and I want to go back uh, again to my high school years and what my, my biggest revelation was, one of them was the revelation, um, I was, so I, I was sitting in my room, and in my closet, the door closed, because nobody can hear me in my closet with the door closed, because <laughs> your, your clothes makes a great sound barrier for anybody who <laughs> outside, so it was like me and Jesus in the closet, and I wanted to experience his real love, because I knew about the hole in my heart, and I knew that if I didn't experience his real love, I would try to get something else to experience it, and I, I know that we need it. I was asking him, Lord, would you give me more of your love? And um, he, it was a head-to-heart moment when the Lord spoke. And he, and I cried, actually. I don't cry a lot, but I cried at that point. And God um, spoke to me through Luke 7, 47. Or no, yes, Luke 7, 47. And it talks about, let me read it, because that's better. She has been forgiven of all her sin, her many sins. This is why she has shown such extravagant love. But those who assume they had very little to be forgiven will love me very little. So growing up in a Christian home, I hadn't realized the depth of how I needed God because I hadn't experienced the depth of um, my like flesh and like what what flesh could produced because I had been saved from when I was really little and I didn't understand like that my sin I knew in my head that when I disobeyed the Holy Spirit it was sin but I and I knew in my head that the only thing that could save me 
was Jesus Christ. That the only thing that could save me was his blood on the cross. But I didn't know in my heart the depth of how my sin, my disobedience to the Holy Spirit broke his heart. And the depth of what he had saved me from when I accepted him as a four-year-old. Um, I didn't understand that. And so I didn't, I, I didn't get the extravagant love that this passage is talking about, um, about the women who was forgiven of much. And so in that moment, God showed me, he like opened up my eyes and he showed me that it was by my, his grace that my four-year-old self knew that I needed God and that nothing else could fill me. It was by his grace that I chose all those times um, to not gossip about my friends. And I chose to obey the Holy Spirit, whatever he was speaking to me. I, I obeyed starting the Bible study. Like that wasn't me. That was his grace pushing me. And I, I have a choice. We all have choices. But it's by his grace. Like that reward system, like Kim said, we can't, our resolutions, we break them 90% of the time because we can't do it by ourselves. But when we acknowledge the Holy Spirit's power in us, uh, and his, that's his grace, it allows us to do what God wants us to do. And so that gave me um, a new insight to God's abundant love to me. And he wanted me to tell him, tell him the real deal. So if you remember back in my elementary years when I was this high and I was like, ashamed because I disobeyed the Holy Spirit about gossiping and I gossiped and I didn't, I, I like ignored it and wanted God to ignore it too and I felt shameful, like I couldn't come to God and I kept, felt separated. Um, that, he, he didn't, that wasn't of him. He, he wants us in our mess and when we're willing to look at the bad things that we've done and we're willing to give them to him, we're no longer separated by shame because shame is not of God. Conviction is of God. And when we're, when, when we're able to, okay, God, this is what I did. This is my hurt, the pain. This is the me mistake. I give it to you. Then he can wipe it away. Um, and, and he can give us the power to overcome. But if we just look the other way and say, like, God, like, please forgive all my sins. Like, that's powerful too. His blood covers it. But it's, it allows us to overcome it when we know that this is what I did and this is what God has forgiven me of and I don't have to be ashamed of it and I don't have to do it again. So that's like the, the new part of the new revelation that God gave me. And the, ne the next part of it is Isaiah 64, 6, is that my deeds are filthy rags. And so growing up in a Christian home, I um, did a lot of good things um, and I felt like that brought me closer to God. And that made me, and it, it, obedience does, like I said in the beginning, that obedience is working out your salvation by fear and trembling. But um, to get to God by doing good things is not, not how we get to God. Like God loves us the same if we, um, how whatever we've done, God loves us the same. And I don't want to get this to be confusing, but... Conviction draws, just know that conviction draws us close to God and shame chases us away. And his, gen, his conviction is gentle. He is always gentle with us. It's not something harsh or scary. The enemy tries to tell, tell us it's harsh or scary. Um, okay. So, today, are we, do we believe that he is enough to satisfy our every longing and desire? Whatever that is, do we believe that he is enough to satisfy our every longing and desire. Um, and do we believe that God is asking us, am I enough that you would give me everything? He's already given us everything he has by dying on the cross. Are we, are, are we, do we believe he's enough that we would give him the time? Um, maybe when Kim was sharing about how we have to redo our schedule or redo our, our trellis to have um, experience him more, is he... Like, is he the best thing? Is he our prize? Is he our treasure? Is he our reward? Um, because he is the lover of our soul. Um, and I want to read the Song of Solomon because it says it better than I can. Okay. Song of Solomon 2, and then it's 1 through 2. 
of him. I am truly his rose, the very theme of his song. I am overshadowed by his love like a lily growing in the valley. So I'm going to read that. I am truly his rose. You are a rose like no other. Heidi, your rose is different than Jackie's rose. Each one of you has a different color rose. And God is, he is enthralled by your rose. He is like, wow, this is the most beautiful thing. You are the very theme of his song. Um, I'm overshadowed by his love, like a lily growing in the valley. And then this is um, like Jesus said, uh, called the shepherd king. Yes, you are my darling companion. You stand out from all the rest. For though thorns surround you, you remain as pure as a lily, more than all the others. And, this short, and then this is like um, the child of God. My beloved is to me the most fragrant of an apple tree. He stands above the sons of man, sitting under his gray shadow, I blossom in his shade, enjoying the sweet taste of his pleasant, delicious fruit, resting with delight where his glory never fades. Um, yeah, so he is the lover of our soul, and he's the only thing that can satisfy us. And so, um, our hearts are gardens, so if we're watering them and we're tending to them above all else, they're going to blossom and bloom in who we're created to. But if we're not tending to them, if we're not um, pursuing our relationship with the Lord, they're going to dry up. Uh, and, yeah, so I would love to play that song now. I'm and not sure if we can play it because of the line. Okay. We can play it. You can say what it is. People can watch it. Okay. And then we can watch it once we shut down the line. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So, so the song is, He is Jealous. Uh, for, no. The song is How He Loves Us. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look it up, you can. Yeah. Because of copyright, sometimes we don't allow it. Mm -hmm. Got it. So stay right here. Okay. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions for... Christina, about what she talked about. Please ask questions. Any <laughs> encouragement or? I don't have a question, but um, I remember three years ago, or was it two years ago, when we worked at the shelter mm -hmm. down at Good Sam, and I remember thinking, like I was going home at like 10 o'clock, and you were going to be there till I forget what time yeah, you had to be there till, but. And I remember asking you, like, so what are you going to do to stay awake? Because that was your job. You had to stay awake. Mm -hmm. And you were like, oh, well, I'm just going to talk to God. And I have this Bible study that I'm working on. And I thought, oh, you were just as awesome. You were such a, I don't know, you were like kind of 19 or, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that was so encouraging. And now look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. are allowing God to mm -hmm. amazing in a mighty way. And you're a great speaker, by the way. Yeah. 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 Good job. You are. Yeah. I want to. I remember this. Candy said today about how we are to share our testimony, and if we don't share our testimony, the rocks will cry out mm -hmm. um, and worship to God. And He is worthy of our lives. He is worthy of our best. He is worthy. Mm -hmm. For sure. Anyone else? Christy has been a very inspiration for my life. I've never been nobody my turn. Um, God do have people that really love you, no matter what you go through and what you come from, you know. And so I've been blessed by her being always there for me when I've had so much anxiety and so much pain. And she never gave up on me and she has a heart. She has she's got a child for me. She has love in her that I have never met nobody in my life like her. And I'm very blessed to be, to be there and have her as a mentor to be there, her in my life every day of my life while I'm going through this season and following Jesus. And I'm very blessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Candy. That's awesome. And that reminds me of something else I want to say. <laughs> is in Romans it talks about the whole earth is yearning and groaning for the unveiling of his sons and daughters. And, and it's just so cool to see each one of you guys grow in your new knowledge as a son and daughter and your identity as a daughter of the king mm -hmm. and each one of us is a daughter of the king and as we like receive that that 
identity and walk in it, you shine because it's Jesus. That's right. <laughs> yes. That's right. Good point. And how does she love the way that she loves? It's because yes. she fills up, right? Yes. She fills up on the word. She said it in her in her um, testimony. Yeah, the Holy Spirit in her. Well, we all do. Once we accept Christ, we all have the Holy Spirit in us from day one. But it's that digging in, like I was talking about, that digging in, running after him, um, you know, pursuing him, obeying him. Um, that's our part. That's the hard work, right? Um, but look what it produces. Um, you know, a life like Christina's and, and a love like yeah. she has for people. Uh, that's the only way we get it, mm -hmm. um, yes. is to run after it. Amen. And that's why we're talking about how are you going to start out the new year? Are you going to get, you know, are you going to get into it and work hard and, you know, press through? That's yeah. Right. Um, and it's like that obedience out of love. It's not mm -hmm. obedience out of trying to be good enough. It's obedience out of knowing that God is your reward and, mm -hmm. and you love him. So that's mm -hmm. you're you're getting on the journey. Like mm -hmm. with and it's what he has done for me. Yes. I love out of that. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know if I'm saying that right, but no, when no. you think about what God has done for you. Mm -hmm personally, yeah. you will serve out of that love. Mm -hmm. You want to give back to him. You want to love him back. And the way we do that, for the most part, is serving others, mm -hmm. loving others well. Um, so that's important. You know, we're talking about Christmas. Jesus left heaven. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> um, <laughs> to come to yeah. save you. Yeah. Um, so that is a lot. He's the creator of the universe. He was there from the beginning. Jesus was at creation. Mm -hmm. um, he loved us so much to leave a perfect place to come here, mm -hmm. you know, yes. on a rescue mission mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to rescue you, each, yes. each one of you, um, each one of us. But we have to, you know, sometimes you have to make it personal because mm -hmm. sometimes I'll think, Oh, yeah, you know, like you said, in my head, mm -hmm. I know Jesus loves me. I grew up in the church from a baby, mm -hmm. um, and I know that. But sometimes when I read scripture, it's like, well, yeah, that's for everybody. Mm -hmm. But we have to claim it mm -hmm. for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jesus came for everybody, mm -hmm. but um, he came for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why sometimes I say, you know, when you're reading scripture, put your name in it. Yes. Because that personalizes it. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, if a verse says, uh, we or whatever, put you in it. Mm -hmm. Or put, you know, I or me or whatever. Change the verse up so it doesn't sound like it's everybody. It personalizes it. Mm -hmm. um, that's powerful. Yeah, and I just want to say, if anyone in the room or anyone watching online... If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, um, he did come to die for you, and all you have to do is tell him that you want him to fill that hole in your heart and that you are done with life your way and that you want to live life his way. And his blood will wash away all the sin of your life and, and set you free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. I mean, I jotted down so many things that you said. Um, the whole comparison thing, I think, with women especially, mm -hmm. um, is a problem. Um, fear of fear of man. Um, you know the whole grace. We could do a whole topic on grace mm -hmm. and not even you know touch it um, because His grace is so amazing. So we'll have to do that. Maybe you can come back and talk about grace okay. another time. <laughs> that would be great. Um, and that you you pointed out we're each unique. Like nobody is the same. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have a different fingerprint. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, we're going to be different. So why do we try to do everything the same as other people do it? We try to dress the way other people dress. We try to act the way other people do. We try to have the same car or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, when God took 
how much time to make us each different. Um, so I thought that was important too. Yeah. I mean, you said a lot of really, really good things. Anybody else have anything you want to point out? I can relate to the whole the shame thing you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just learning that myself. Um, before I got saved last year, before like I would say like Judy or JC like all the time, and then but when it hit my heart that it was so wrong, mm -hmm. I would like punish myself. Oh all day long, like not eat, not do anything because I felt so guilty. Mm -hmm. And now I've learned like when, if I do make a mistake or like, you know, I do something and realize that it is against God, like I can hand it to him mm -hmm. now with a smile on my face or with tears in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And then you will take it and it'll be something maybe that um, I could teach someone else not to do. Mm -hmm. like it's like a learning experience. So, yeah. yeah. Those are Satan's two biggest things is shame and guilt. Yeah. He uses shame and guilt like nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's easy to fall into that, but no, you can always come back. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, he's a forgiving God. He's grace filled. Mm -hmm. um, he's faithful. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be afraid mm -hmm. to tell him exactly what's up, yeah. you know, <laughs> because he will. You know, he, he's there with open arms, yeah. and um, he, he wants to forgive. So don't get caught in that um, shame and guilt. You know, I think Rick Warren says, name it and claim it. Like, mm -hmm. to God, name it and claim it. Name it and say, yes, I agree with you. What I did was wrong, mm -hmm. and claim what you did. And, and it's over then. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Satan... Well, he's the accuser. The Holy Spirit does not accuse us. He mm -hmm. convicts us. Yeah. But Satan's the accuser, and he will try to remind us of those things we've already been forgiven for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, you know, if you're struggling with any of that guilt and shame, you know, come and talk to somebody, mm -hmm. someone here um, that's here regularly in the group, or reach out, um, you know, on Facebook. Did, have anybody had any replies or anything? Okay. I just want to say, Christina is a rock star for she the is. King of Kings yes, and the Lord is. of Lords, and it has been an honor, gift, and blessing to that the Lord uh, intertwined our lives. Like I know Christina when uh, Gabby and Christina were in elementary school, and then grew out a little bit, and then uh, I had slipped, slipped my grip and lost my girls. Um, and then when the Lord brought uh, Christina back around in my life and, and put us together for this mission, it is just breathtaking. I could not have done this last two years without her. Uh, she is an angel sent from God, and uh, she has been my biggest cheerleader. Um, and, and I just love and adore you like one of my own. And um, keep rocking for the king. I love you more. <laughs> I love you more. <laughs> Thank you. There's no one I've met who's loved like Jolie has loved. Yes, I never knew there were Christian people that could love you so much. It's so true. Like being at the Parker house, the same Sylvia, all you guys get engaged. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Christian people like this. And true love, true yeah. has the Holy Spirit to <laughs> love you no matter what you're going through, your anxiety, your depression, your drugs. They love you, and these women love us, all of them, all you guys, and we are, I'm so blessed to be here, to be loved by all you guys, that I really feel the love, and I thank Jesus all of them, just have the forward, and I don't, I don't need nothing, I don't want nothing, I just want to serve him, and help somebody else. Right, that's what it's all about, yeah. Just blessed that I'm here, and I'm just blessed that God You're going to make me cry, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to say something, Heidi? I thought you wanted to say Yeah, that. I just wanted to say that um, Christina uh, <clears throat> was, I've never felt loved like I felt with her. She has been like my rock this, mm -hmm. this, this whole year. Um, she has got me through a lot. 
she has taught me about leaning into grace and, and leaning, you know, and just um, pushing through. And when she talks about the um, what you were saying about God saying to you, "Will you, will you love me even, even when you're, when you're, you know, going through something? Mm-hmm. Will you still, will you still stay? Will you still stand for me?" Basically, um, that that's something that resonates with me. Like, yeah, I am. Am I enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah that really hit me tonight. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like, is yeah. he enough for each thing we go through? Yeah, so I can I can say cause she's like been my biggest cheerleader. You're, you guys are thing. like my biggest cheerleaders. <laughs> I have watched her grow, and she has just helped me to persevere through some. Normally, I wouldn't have persevered. So good. Yeah. So she has grown through you guys, mm-hmm. and yeah. you have grown through her, so that's what it's all about, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's that's how the kingdom works, yeah. you know, so, I'm so excited for what God has for her, what he's doing to her, I'm just so proud of this you, praise God, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we give them the glory, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, yep, yeah, I'm still human, <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yep, yeah, we are until we get to heaven, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why we need each other. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate Likewise. <laughs> okay. Well, if nobody has anything else, I guess we'll say good night to Facebook Live. And uh, you're welcome to join us. Any Wednesday night. We'd love to have more people here with us. Um, So we'll see you next week.